Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Radical Center. My name is John Langley. Now, I'm just adding this little piece in front of the video you're about to watch about Medicaid expansion in Texas because I just want to put it in context for you. So recently, this video was shot and produced to appear on Amazon Prime and then also to appear on local television uh, here in Texas. Now, for various reasons, it just didn't pan out. Uh, nothing happened. We're not mad at Amazon and they're not mad at us. It just didn't pan out. However, we're quite proud of this piece of work. So what we decided to do, even though it pertains to the state of Texas, we decided to post it here to this YouTube channel for a very simple reason. The arguments against expanding Medicaid in Texas have actually been used by other states. So what we wanted to do was expand that out and you can then think of it as other states that may, for the reasons they may say they don't want to expand it, as you will see, don't necessarily make a lot of sense. So this is why we decided to post it here so it sees the light of day. Otherwise, it would just sit in the Radical Center vault somewhere here in the Radical Studio. So that's why it's here. And uh, so please enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, well, thanks for watching. One of our biggest takeaways from 2020 just might be the realization that our lives can turn on a dime through no fault of our own. And if you've ever been hit with an unexpected medical bill or have had to worry about the cost of your next visit to the doctor, then chances are you already know this. Because access to healthcare in America is based primarily on whether we can pay or if our insurance will, which leaves nearly 7 million Texans hoping not to get sick. And still, Texas continues to turn down billions of dollars from the federal government for the expansion of Medicaid, even though Texas has the highest rate of uninsured in the nation. For decades, we've heard that America has the best health care system in the world. But what good is that if you can't afford to use it? Hi, I'm Jackie Nowak, and today the Radical Center team explores what's really happening with health care in Texas. Hey everybody, welcome to the Radical Center. My name is Jonathan Langley. Now, as Jackie Nowak just said, in today's program, we're going to be looking into the state of healthcare in Texas. Should Texas have taken the extra money that the federal government uh, has been offering now for quite a few years to expand what people call Obamacare, in other words, the Medicaid expansion here in Texas? Have we turned down a major opportunity or did our political leaders make the right decision in turning down the federal money. Now, we're going to be hearing from them. Yes, Dan, my producer, sitting right here on cue, is going to play various snippets from our political leaders to see what they said seven, eight years ago and today in turning down this federal money. And we're going to be looking at facts, because that's what we do on this program, to see if anybody's actually made the right decision. Because... We have reams of paper. If you've ever listened to our show on the radio or on the podcast, we are everywhere, I'm pleased to say, then uh, the answer typically has been, unfortunately, I know you're going to be shocked that sometimes what politicians actually say versus reality on the ground, I know you're going to be surprised, are two totally different things. So we're going to start by looking into why Texas turned down Medicaid expansion. And we're going to go back and look at people like Ted Cruz and Governor Perry, what they said way, way back. Remember, this was going on for some time now, way back in 2013. And we're going to try and back it up with facts to see if that matches reality on the ground. Okay, go ahead. Let's play Governor Perry from April the 1st, 2013. Uh, today I stand with Senator Cornyn, Senator Cruz, Congressman Barton, and Congressman Burgess to repeat our stance, Texas will not be participating in Medicaid expansion. Our decision is based on what is in the best interest of Texans, all Texans, and is one definitive way that we can seek to minimize the damage done by the institution of Obamacare. It would benefit no one in our state to see their taxes skyrocket, uh, our economy crushed, and our budget crumble under the weight of oppressive Medicaid costs. Well, they saw Governor Perry from rather appropriately, I thought, April the 1st, 2013, basically saying that the reason they didn't want to take Medicaid money, free money from the federal government, because in reality, it's really, quote, 
not free. And the free part is it's 100% now, but then in a few years' time, going back to 2013, we then have to start paying a contribution to it. In other words, the federal government would pay 90% of the cost of the Medicaid expansion actually right about now, here in 2020. And therefore, we'd be on the hook, meaning Texas, to pay that extra 10%. And by golly, we want Texas to stay a low-tax state. And who am I to say, as an independent, believe it or not, I am, who am I to say that Texas should not remain a low-tax state except for one teeny tiny detail? It isn't. A low tax state. Now on the screen, uh, the Dan will put it up for me. But the ones that I really fo want us to focus on is 13 and 32. Now you may say, see, see Langley, I told you Texas is not that bad with 32 out of 50. Well, 32 out of 50, A, doesn't sound like a low tax state to me. But what I really want you to look at compared to California is that their total tax burden is 9.27% and Texas is 8.2, which in percentage point terms is roughly 12% higher. So they have a 12% higher tax burden than we do. But as you're going to see, uh, result-wise, they get quite a lot uh, for their money. Now, you can see the actual main difference, and we all know this if you live here in Texas, is the property tax burden. The property tax burden here in Texas compared to California is percentage-wise roughly 40 to 50% higher. 40 to 50%. Now, obviously, they have a 3.5% average for their income tax. We have zero. But if you look at our sales tax versus their sales tax and the uh, property tax burden, which we have, basically, it, it gets rid of a lot of the difference, which is why California, it really is not that much more expensive. Now, Calif New York, clearly is quite a bit more expensive, 30% more expensive cost of living just on taxes alone. But just to be clear, Governor Perry Texas is not a low tax state. And by the way, Governor Abbott likes to keep saying the same thing too. But hey, you know what? Who am I to argue with politicians? They always tell us the truth. Okay, let's go to the next reel. Already Medicaid is responsible for one quarter, 25% of our state's budget. And some estimates that if we accepted expansion, that number would jump to nearly a third. From 1990 to 2010, National Medicaid expenditures increased by 445%. Okay, so as we saw from Governor Perry, then Governor Perry 2013, uh, basically saying that, uh, you know, Medicaid just keeps growing. It's so expensive. What are we going to do about it? Uh, but, hey, just a minor, minor snippet of detail, which we're going to put up on the screen now. Uh, compared to private health insurance, it's just, just – well, mind you, he was talking from uh, – up till 2010, but because this his uh, video there you saw was from 2013. But bottom line is, if you actually look at this graphic you now have on the screen, private health insurance spending has actually grown exponentially more, and you can see it there, the Medicaid. In other words, Medicaid does a much better job of holding down costs than private health insurance does. And if you're a private member of have a company, work for a company, you're lucky enough that has private health insurance, I guarantee you your contribution has actually increased. Unless, unless of course, you're lucky enough to have Governor Abbott's health care coverage, which we have. And we will be showing that to you in a minute because, by golly, we should all want that. All right. Dan, roll the next reel, please. In Texas, only three out of every ten doctors are accepting new Medicaid patients, and we fear that number may actually decrease if expansion went through. Okay, so in that one, Governor Perry, back in 2013, April 1st, 2013, was talking about, well, you know, if we expand, take this money from the federal government to expand Medicaid in Texas, uh, people are just not going to find access to physicians. Physicians don't want to take it because they don't make as much money, so it's really bad, and we're going to hear this from Ted Cruz, we're going to hear this from uh, Governor Abbott, we're going to hear they all sing from the same hymnal, which is essentially saying, does taking federal money to expand Medicaid, a.k.a. Obamacare, in the state of Texas, actually mean that everybody else has less access to health care because physicians don't want to take it? All right, Dan, uh, put up the graphic. So this one needs a little bit of an explanation, but uh, as you can see, uh, across the bottom, is the number of studies. In other words, uh, the most you can see is over 140 studies uh, on the effect of Medicaid expansion. And then on the left is the number, is the particular category. So in this case, for example, uh, access 
and utilization of care. So green means positive, blue is neutral, no, neither one or the other, and orange is, there's been, a, they've, these various studies have found a negative effect. Well, guess what? Okay. Mr. Perry uh, and Mr. Abbott, uh, according to this, access and utilization of care is extremely positive. Uh, insurance coverage is actually increased. Well, no surprise there because guess what? People have access to it. But the one I want you to focus on is fourth from the bottom, provider capacity. In other words, are these people uh, being able to get access, meaning everybody, the general population, have we been able to find better access, less access, or neutral access to our physicians? And then as you can see there, it's either had a positive effect or no effect whatsoever. In other words, it really hasn't had a negative effect. And there is a tiny bit of orange people uh, studies saying there that um, it's had a negative effect. But really, overall, this is really the expansion of ACA in states that have taken it has really helped uh, with access to healthcare, not just for people that needed it previously and couldn't have it, but for everybody. Hey, who am I to argue with facts, Governor Perry? And we'll be coming back to this one again uh, because there's one, there's a couple other stud, uh, snippets in there I want to go on. But hey, you know what? Let's keep moving through and see what our leaders had to say back in 2013. Why wouldn't we take the opportunity to join with these folks outside the governor's office right now and try to come up with a better way that serves their interests and the taxpayers' interests better? So the next graphic, uh, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, from Health Affairs Journal. And I'm just going to read this. You can see it highlighted there in blue. We found there was no significant difference in overall acceptance rates following Medicaid expansion. Uh, comparing states that expanded Medicaid to those that had not expanded as of January 2015, there's no statistical difference in overall rates accepting Medicaid patients. So there you go, apart from uh, OBGYN, where it did go down slightly. So, hey, what can I say? Uh, now, this was from 2015. Now, I'll, I'll point out on our website, you better see where all these uh, facts came from, but um, this is the latest I could find on this. If we could have found something for 2018 or at least 2019, we're trying to get as close as possible, but uh, we couldn't. But the other one, the other one I showed you from the Kaiser Foundation uh, actually was from 2018. So I think uh, the previous graphic, I think that does show you that, um, well, generally there's a positive outcome if you give ac people access to healthcare. It's unbelievable. I'm stunned and amazed that hey there you go but let's let's you know what let's keep going unfortunately when congress and washington make a mistake uh it's the american people that have to pay the price i want to show this other one from the uh, kaiser foundation uh or the same one from the kaiser foundation i should say where it says that the um uh self-reported health you can see that third from the bottom uh not a surprise uh, has no negative consequences and mostly positive. Uh, but the one that really uh, seems to, uh, even though it's got a smaller number of studies, is the state uh, state economy. Third from the second from the bottom. Yes. In other words, states that take ACA money actually do better financially than states that don't take. ACA expansion money. And as you can see, there's actually 20 studies. That's the number of studies. It's across the board. A number of studies. So 20 studies right up till, uh, and this is actually from 2020, uh, January 2020, as saying that not one of those studies has found anything negative about taking ACA money. I mean, there are negatives, as we're about to see, for Texas, for uninsured women, uninsured children. But those are minor things uh, for people like Governor Abbott, who absolutely loves, apparently, uh, turning down free money. But hey, I thought I would uh, bring that one up again. Now, the other one I wanted to show uh, as we get into this uh, is the um, so-called negative outcomes. Well, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the negative outcomes, uh, Mr. Cruz and everybody else. So let's talk about pro-life. And I'm going to read this. It's pretty basic. In an analysis of children's health insurance uh, from Georgetown University, 21%, 21% of the nation's uninsured children, which is 835,000 kids, are in Texas. Yes, Mr. Abbott, sir. 21% uh, of the kids uninsured are just in the great state of Texas. I'll put another graphic, uh, Dan, the, the pie chart, thanks. And you can see this. Uh, here's the 21%. Uh, we're in the uh, sort of, uh, I guess, sort of taupe color. 
uh, on the top there. Florida has uh, 8.4, California 7.4, Georgia 5, Arizona 3, and Ohio 3, and the others add up to 50%. But bottom line is 20%, over 20% of the uninsured kids are just in the state of Texas. So essentially, yes, Texas has high levels of uninsured children for the simple reason that we refused to expand Medicaid. Free money, okay? And then we're going to get to that in a minute. Before someone says to me, you know what, Langley, you're a socialist. We're going to end up paying for it no matter what. Um, Well, we've already pointed out that there's a huge economic benefit to the state, not least of which you would think would be good to take care of children. Uh, But let's keep going. There's more, as they say on television. All right, so this one is... um, Infant mortality. So this is, uh, infant mortality is kids under the age of one. So newborns, essentially, not neonatal or postnatal, 28 days, but this is uh, newborns under the age of one, one years old, essentially. And they're highlighted uh, in Texas. Uh, we have um, 5.7 deaths uh, per 1,000 versus uh, kids born. Uh, under the year of age of one and for and this is for 2019 we do try to keep our facts up to date where possible and for california as you can see it's 4.3 and remember california did take the free money quote medicaid expansion there's a trap according to governor Abbott, as we will hear uh, you can check in but you can't check out that's his favorite line we're going to use that in a minute all right so why don't we play what ted cruz else had to say before we move on let's get to ted cruz and premiums yes Premiums. Go ahead. Play the tape, Dan. And if you are lucky enough to find a job and find a job that has health insurance coverage, we're seeing premiums go up dramatically. All right. So, Dan, put this one up. Thanks. Uh, This one actually shows uh, Medicaid expense, uh, cost of Medicaid over the years, as you can see, from 87 to projected to 2023 uh, versus private. And if you just take a look at the top, Medicaid is in the middle, but let's take, we're looking at the Medicaid and private. Uh, You can see uh, that Medicaid has kept this cost down far more than private health care has. This is on average uh, per year, uh, and you can see the differences there. Uh, So yeah, Medicaid actually does a better job of keeping costs down. And if we go back to this graphic I showed before, thanks, Dan, the cumulative growth in in cost of insurance or spending, I should say, by private insurance. Yeah. You want to know why insurance rates keep going up if you're in a company plan? This is why. Because they keep raising rates on us. Whereas Medicaid and actually Medicare, because you see Medicaid's at the bottom, they've actually done a better job. So, Mr. Cruz, sir, it didn't quite work out as you said, really, did it? We're not going to go broke. We're going to go broke if we keep paying private insurance, according to this. Now, I'm not suggesting for one second we give up private insurance. No. On the other hand, I'm saying to say that Medicare does a worse job than private, it's just the facts don't add up. All right. Uh, Let's go back to Mr. Cruz. Many advocates of the expansion say that the federal government is providing free money. Well, it's not free money. It's our money. It's the money that the taxpayers in Texas and all over the country have contributed to And our federal government right now has a national debt that's larger than the size of our entire economy, $16.5 trillion. All right, Dan, thanks. So that was Ted Cruz back in 2013 saying he's not going to take extra money. He he doesn't want to take extra money from the federal government because, by golly, all we're going to do is add to the debt and basically put our children and our grandchildren down the coal mine with the pit ponies because there won't be any business, any money for them to be able to do anything. So this is the right thing for us as Texans to do is to sacrifice ourselves, especially apparently children, uh, because we don't believe in adding debt to the uh, to the federal government. Well, it's just a few minor details of all that, of course. Number one, uh, in 2013, the debt was, uh, I'm going to take his word for it, I didn't check, $16 trillion. Today, it's $24 trillion. So, Mr. Cruz, sir, I'm not quite sure um, what you would uh, say about that. But have, forgetting the debt for one second, just forgetting the deficit and the debt for one second, um, he also made the point that we don't want to take the money. Uh, and expand Medicaid and then end up with all these extra bills for Texas. Now, as we've already proven, uh, there's huge financial benefits for the whole state by taking the money, not least of which, of course, the outcomes are that hopefully it'll have less uninsured children, women, uh, and so on. 
But here's another very interesting fact. Texas sends every year to the federal government, have a guess how much, you're going to be shocked, $264 billion. How much money do we get back? Roughly $40 billion, somewhere in there, $39, 39 to $40 billion. These are rough numbers. These are, By the way, these are fairly recent. These are from 2017, 2018. So we are sending in to the federal government every year $260 billion, getting back in grants and everything else roughly $40 billion. And you might be going, see, that's because Texas is so good. We just want to give money to everybody else. Well, that's great, except think about it. So all the states that did do Medicaid expansion, they're taking our money and using it through the federal government, redistributing it to pay for their Medicaid expansion. Meanwhile, on principle, according to Mr. Cruz, we didn't take Medicaid expansion, so we're giving much more money to the federal government every year than we're getting back, when in fact we could actually take a lot more money back to expand Medicaid in Texas, have huge financial benefits that actually pays for itself, as we've seen, with less, uh, with better results. So, yeah, it's great that we're not taking the money, Mr. Cruz, but guess what? The federal government's just giving it to places like, God forbid, California. Really? Yeah. Who are actually did expand Medicaid and have a lot less uninsured children and better outcomes all the way around. All right. So there is a huge benefit, financial benefit. And like I said, these are all facts. I'm joking, all joking aside. We give $260 billion a year to the federal government. We get less than $40 billion a year back. And we don't, and Ted Cruz's argument is, well, we don't want to take the debt, take on extra debt for the federal government. We're already doing it. We're already giving it to them, mate. It's already happening. All right. Now, let's run Mr. Abbott. Okay. Governor Abbott, well, at that point, not Governor Abbott, but uh, let's go roll our first Abbott reel. Thanks a lot, Dan. So what we're finding is that under Obamacare, there will be less access to health care, not more access to health care. Okay, so we're going to go into this. So that one's not true. Next one, please. They themselves are opting out of providing health care under the system because they're losing money on patients and they can't make out of in volume just because they treat more patients. And losing money on each patient doesn't mean they can treat more people. And so I chose this one for the simple reason that Abbott's saying there'll be less access to health care. Well, again, as we've shown, that is fundamentally not true. There are no negative results in any of those surveys for people have for physicians not taking Medicaid. Uh, in fact, it's in there, there was either a neutral, meaning it didn't make it better or worse, or it was a positive effect. So, hey, seven years later, Mr. Abbott, because uh, I don't know, that was, um, yeah, seven years later, I guess you, you weren't going to take it. Uh, but how are we doing? As uh, you, you say to we're going to expand for uh, expand some kind of health care for uninsured people here in Texas. Uh, how's that working out? I know. Let's play a real. But Bill, let me put this into context, because in that capital right behind me, we have legislative leaders who are working on expanding Medicaid and health care in the state of Texas by adding both by trying to do a better job of taking care of those with disabilities and seniors. But we are doing that within the confines of our own budget. OK, so there's Abbott now saying we're going to expand our own program. And guess who else said it? John Cornyn. I roll that one, too. Do you think it is realistic to actually have something together before you go off for recess? Well, I don't think we have any choice. We know under Obamacare that uh, for many people, individuals and small businesses, insurance premiums are skyrocketing, deductibles are unaffordable, and insurance companies are pulling out of markets uh, right and left. So we know we're going to have to do something, and what we've proposed is something called the Better Care Act. Well, right now, for example, in my state, we did not do the Medicaid expansion. Uh, 600,000 Texans, low-income Texans, are going to have access to private health insurance that they don't have even under Obamacare. And uh, we're going to bring premiums down and create a market where people can buy a product that they want at a price they can afford. These are all facts. Uh, you'll have all the tweet things and the emails to write to Jackie and I in a minute because Jackie and I are going to get together and discuss everything. But I hope uh, you all understand that nothing here is made up. This is all true. There's nothing in there that I have no ax to grind with anybody. If you have great health care, knock yourself out. If Abbott has great health care, knock himself out, Mr. Abbott. But I do care that you have control over other people's who can't even remotely get to yours. 
Hey everybody, Jonathan Langley here again. Thanks for watching the video there about Texas Medicaid expansion. I just wanted to say again that the reason we didn't use it for Amazon Prime or for local television uh, in Texas, it just didn't fit some of the things we were trying to do. But we wanted it to see the light of day. Uh, so feel free, like, comment, subscribe, write to us here uh, below if you have any questions about it. You can certainly see why some states who say they don't want to, even though this is Texas, uh, Medicaid expansion, you can see why they might not want it or their arguments, you can certainly see the same. So hopefully it was interesting for you. Thanks for watching and we'll be back very, very soon. Oh,